Let's get a little weird. Let's get a little loud. Those sounds you like to hear. We got it going on. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to the odd cast, where we talk about people who are turning their passion into profession and subsequently that passion into paychecks. We have a very special guest today. We are actually in house here at Five and a Dime with Jason, uh, the owner and operator. Jason, yeah. how are you doing tonight? How's it going? It's uh, awesome to have you on the show. It's uh, awesome to be you here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, you know, Five and a Dime is basically, for all those who don't know out there, is an awesome San Diego kind of clothing lifestyle shop. I mean, you can't really put a pin on fully what it is with one simple word. Yeah. When. When I was younger, there was definitely divisions. If you were a skateboarder, you looked a certain way, or there's, it's very blurred now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even kind of with our business, um, we started as a men's, well, we actually started as a, just a boutique. Um, I got my start in skate and snow, and uh, was looking for something to do. And I also worked retail, you know, when I was y much younger, I worked in record shops and skate shops. Awesome. And um, was, my sister was going to business, she was going to USD and got her business degree. And I sort of was like, let's just <laughs> like open a shop, right? We could do it. And when we first started, we had, um, we had minimal apparel, uh, mostly t-shirts and stuff. Um, and we had like art books and we had like designer toys. Mm -hmm. So it actually, we, we opened in November uh, 2005 like on Black Friday. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know why I just had this thing. <laughs> I was like, I was like, we let's get the shop open in time for Black Friday. <laughs> I just thought it would be fun, right? Yeah. Um, to try to hit the numbers on that day. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then we, we got it open. Um, it was actually where we're at now at 828G. So we started here. Yep. And we were in this space for about three, two and a half, three years. It was like till 2008, right? Yeah, roughly. And then we moved to 701. On Which the is corner, the corner. Right on the corner where Super 7 Super is. Super 7 is, yeah. yeah. And then we did that build out. So how Super 7 looks was what, five and a dime? Because we were going for that whole vintage, like nickel and dime looking wow. aesthetic. Yeah. So that build out is actually on account of you guys. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And then we, we paid a lot of money for that thing, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. We made a ton of mistakes. Um, and then, you know, the streetwear market sort of, oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, thought I was going to knock it. No, it's <laughs> no, okay. We're all, all right. Dead. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the the sort of like the floor kind of gave out for streetwear yeah. and then we had that dealing with the economy and the crash and yeah, exactly. the housing market crash and, mm -hmm. or the housing thing and absolutely th yeah. yeah it got real screwy for us and we <clears throat> we actually probably stayed in 701 much longer than we should have oh i think somewhere around two like 2012 we decided to move out of the space it might have been later than that um, when you sent me those questions earlier to kind of like get me like ready for the discussion, I was like dates. Like I, I can't like <laughs> oh, it's no, so that's hard to like remember like yeah. no, that's exactly all good. when things landed. Yeah, but, yeah, um, it's, it's more like just loose timeline. You no, know? yeah, but every I've been I've been telling these stories for so long that like I had to go back and go. Is that actually the date? <laughs> like, did I just say that so many times yeah, incorrectly that I believe I'm believing? That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's yeah. a great, like 20,000 foot look at like the journey though. And where it's, I mean, and then back to here though. Yeah. And then we, and then we came back to here. So yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's just, it's, it's weird because I actually grew up in Sacramento. Um, and, and, uh, got into action sports early at an okay. early age. Like, um, I started ra racing BMX when I was like 10 or 11. Wow. And I raced for like, I r r raced for about three or four years and, you know, and then I got my first skateboard and then once, um, I, I, I got, once I got into that, it was pretty much a wrap for the BMX. 
um, as fun as BMX was, yeah. it was really expensive and it was a weekend sport and I could only really go and race on the weekends and my dad had to take me, but with the skateboard, you could just wander, right? You could mm. wander the streets. It was a different time, you know, like my parents weren't, if I was inside the house on the weekend, they were more concerned. They wanted me out, you know, running Roman. around the neighborhood and yeah. running around and playing and stuff. So that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like ultimately like, what you guys have done is like kind of just roll with the flow, roll with the punches, kind of bob and weave and just keep it kind of, I don't know, kind of unique and fresh. I think so. We've had to learn how to adapt. Yeah, and definitely. That, that's been real, a real crazy experience because when we, when we first opened the store, it was just a concept, an idea of like, hey, here's the shit that I like and I want to like share it with the world. And then to where we are today is like, it's two different businesses almost. Yeah, I would definitely, kind I mean, of, yeah, know. I guess because, yeah, it's like the journey from like toys, books, and like yeah. kind of candy to like streetwear lifestyle, you know, now doing the good stuff, Cookie Co. Right. as well. Yeah. So, let, so let, let me try to give you the shortest explanation of that. Yeah. When we, when we opened the store, I, like I said, I wanted to share the... I, I wanted to share with San Diego the things that like I was interested in and didn't think that there was like anyone really doing it at, at that point, mm. especially when it came to like uh, Medicom and Bear Bricks or, or, uh, I mean, that was pretty much my favorite thing. And then I got, and because of that, I got into all the cause toys early and started my cause collection, like even before I had the store. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I sold all that stuff too early. <laughs> and now it's like worth thousands of dollars, but I, I'm not good at collecting things of value because I f worried that it's going to get ruined if if I'm keeping it. You know, it gets yeah. dusty or whatever. Yeah. So, in, like those people that collect, you know, really expensive, um, like they have crazy shoe collections. Like I have a crazy shoe collection, but mine is all like I just wear everything. You know, because yeah, exactly. I can't stand I can't stand the pressure of I keeping used to something have like pristine, yeah. pristine. I used to have way too many, way too many Jordans. And I was just like, you know, F it. I'm either going to sell these and make my money now off of yeah. whatever little money I can make. Right. Or I'm going to wear them. And I wore Which, some of them. And that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a definitely a fan of, of wearing, wearing, wearing everything. You yeah. Know wearable I mean? art. Um, even with the toys, um, I, I do tend to bust everything out of the packaging. I like yeah. to like display stuff. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Uh, when I was young, well, young, you know, and I was like into toy GI Joes or transformers. I, I yeah. mean, I pretty much like destroyed everything that I got, you know, I blew <laughs> up every GI Joe figure. Yeah. And so at a much older age now, it's fun to sort of collect it. And, and some of that stuff I do like to keep like, packaged you yeah. know just because i never did that when i was little yeah yeah you know what i mean i i didn't i didn't do that so um yeah so you know we brought the toys into the store uh the i just thought the art books and stuff was a great addition to the shop yeah you were and, saying like coffee table books yeah coffee table books, yeah, yeah that's kind of cool i mean because yeah. i feel like what you i mean in a coffee table book inherently you can write about like kind of fun and unique like quick subjects that are interesting yeah super seven actually has a pretty and that's kind of what we did okay we, yeah we had a lot of books similar to that there was a company called ginkgo press out of sf uh -huh. that um published most of the books that okay. we were getting um and then we had the smallest rack on this wall <laughs> it probably could fit maybe 15 t-shirts on it wow and the first brands we had in the store were the hundreds and crooks and oh, information. I mean, talk about like brands that became kind of mega, yeah, mega hitters, yeah, yeah in we the got, streetwear game. We got lucky, yeah. Um, and, and that's like, are those like you know just buddies from? Yeah. That's so awesome. so what, when I when I first moved to San Diego, I worked at a few record stores, but I was still skateboarding. Mm -hmm. This is '96, okay. and. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a job at a place called Pacific Drive. Um, it's a skate shop in okay. PB. And um, to me, I mean, they're still in business. They've been open, damn, almost 
I, I'm guessing here, but close to 40 years or something. Wow, they've, so been, they've, they've been around it. a long time. They've seen it all. Yeah, and they they have like the you know the best pro. They have a really great skate team and Sick. like like yeah they 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 they're they're, they're one, probably one of the best skate shops in San Diego. Yeah. I was lucky. I got a job working for them, and then it kind of like that's where things like took off for me in that industry. Um, I met a couple guys that started a brand here in San Diego called Alpha Numeric. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and um, and then they they we we all kind of like the the Alpha Numeric thing was really awesome because kind of a thing that you don't really see too much these days called brand loyalty ah so when we were when i was young and i was skateboarding i rode indie trucks and spitfire wheels and to this day at 44 years old i still do right yep. it's like you have a you pick your your yeah. teams right exactly and those are those are great ones by the way though those are like right. mainstays but the even league. in sports right you your brand Nike, loyal Adidas, like puma whatever well, and and teams even oh yeah right how many oh, people yeah. jump ship when Dude, well everyone everyone's a LeBron fan they're like, not no a fan offense. of teams I never really like I never well I grew up in Sacramento so you already know what I'm gonna say like Kings. I, yeah I have no choice like Mike Bibby yeah. and yeah. yeah oh my god that was like one of the greatest eras dude Mike Bibby Chris Weber yeah. uh, Peja Stoyakovich I mean seven games. And they got cheated. <laughs> Double overtime or whatever. <laughs> they got cheated against the Lakers too. I, I admit it. When Ori hit that shot, <laughs> I scream. I was at my friend's house. I screamed so loud that the cops came because <laughs> it was like domestic <laughs> violence or something. The, Dude. the neighbors called the cops because I screamed so <laughs> loud, and I think I even ripped <laughs> carpet out of the I had carpet fibers in my hands dude that was I mean yeah well you guys got that's absolute. the closest we've ever gotten yeah you guys got hosed too you yeah. should have won that there was so, like what like 21 fouls in the last quarter or something it was yeah, ridiculous it was nuts it, yeah but uh, and then and, yeah. and then the the dust settles and the refs come forward and you're like <laughs> oh man it's yeah. like you it's can't it was a scandal situation. oh the second that the second that the one guy got caught Donahue yeah you knew that the whole thing was like there's, there's no way one guy just gets caught up, does time, and like he did it for everyone yeah, else. Yeah, because you know that he and all his buddies were, yeah. And they were like got caught with this like fixer, and the fixer had like a great nickname. I forgot what it is. It was, you yeah. know, like some like Billy the Goat Fetcher Tompkins or something like that. You know. <laughs> yeah. So you know, um, getting back to sort of the brand <laughs> loyalty thing, it's like, like I'm still a Kings fan. You know, yeah. like I can't, you know. And 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 then you know with skateboarding and that that whole example well, turn to alphanumeric. Here was a brand that was from San Diego and it was the fucking shit. Yeah. Can I yeah. say that? Oh yeah, we're okay. good. Sorry. We're good. Sorry. We're explicit. Oh, okay. It was the best. Yeah. Like it not only was it a brand that people were trying to obtain it was really good quality product yeah. that's awesome like like Ali Asha the guy who was pretty much the main main guy as far as design was concerned mm -hmm. he was doing ergonomic knees with in jeans before that was even a thing wow. he he developed outerwear for snowboarding where he and he like designed ventilation and the now is commonplace. Yep. That was all stuff that was in alphanumeric jackets wow. yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah you know what awesome. I mean? And like he was just doing it. And um, like when your alphanumeric package came in, you were like, you would go nuts. I mean, like we were just, everyone was wearing head to toe alpha, right? Yeah. And we were like a, a crew. And. Um, and and then Alpha was around for a while, and it sort of dissolved, mm -hmm. and everybody needed to go do something, yeah. right? <laughs> so yeah. I I t well I, at the time I was also working at a dot com. I was working at a music dot com. Interesting. Yeah, because my uh, my whole other half is through DJing. Okay. Like, that's my other thing that I've as far as like making money for myself. Yeah. I've been DJing for about twenty three years or wow. so. So um, I worked at a music.com here in San Diego called um, mp3.com. It was like kind of like what SoundCloud is today, but like 
almost too ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like... Timing is everything like with HTML the Night Game. and Flash was just not that sick yeah. in 2002. Yeah, now it's yeah. like Two, the dopest you know, thing. Yeah. yeah, it didn't look rad. Yeah. Um, so I worked for them for a while, and then... Uh, um, they got bought out. They moved to San Francisco, and everyone got severance packages. I, I rode that wave for about a year, <laughs> unemployed, just living off severance and DJing and stuff. Yeah. And um, this sort of like landed in my lap. Like there was a the space was available, and there's more to it, but I'm kind of getting to the. Um, and this landed in our lap, and we we went for it, you know. Um, but because of my connection to alphanumeric, I m made friends with people as they were starting to track towards do making, creating their brands. I see. So Ben and Bobby, they actually went to school at UC, UC USD or USCSD, one of these. One ones. of the SDSU, UCSD. I, yeah, well, yeah, one yeah, of the, one of them. One of the I went to college here. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, so I met them. Well, um, when, I think in their final year of college, and they had just started the hundreds, uh -huh. something like that. So I, I, I'm gonna. I, it's not. I'm not. It's not 100 percent, but it, very close to like the first season drop for the hundreds. First season drop for Crooks. Um. Yeah, we got that stuff in the store, and Crooks and Castle, same thing. Those guys were all sort of connected through Alpha, one way or another. There was. The, the, you know, so we That's all cool. sort of knew each other, and I just was like, "Yeah, put your brand in the store." It's not like I was like, "Ooh, I got hundreds, I got crooks." I didn't know any better. I was yeah, just like, yeah, man, dude, you guys are we're we're all cool. Like, chuck that shit in the store. Let's yeah. and now let's like see what happens. Years later, it happens to look like it was some master plan or something. Maybe, <laughs> um, maybe I don't know. Like we we carried them, and we were the only ones. We were the only ones carrying those brands f for a while. Like they gave us exclusivity yeah. in San Diego yeah. for a long time, yeah. and then uh, and then I think they eventually opened up to Univ and Encinitas, and then between them and LA, there really wasn't much, right? So we were like doing really well, really well with the streetwear. Um, because it was like as it was just climbing and climbing and then all over print. I don't know if you guys remember oh, the all yeah. over, all over print. print was giant. We got we got on we got on that wave and um, yeah, it was nuts. And my problem with the toys was as much as I love doing them, they just really weren't selling. And the stuff that we were selling in the store, I wasn't into like we were carrying hmm. the brand Kid Robot. Yeah. With the dunnies and stuff. Yeah. And I just, I don't know why, I just didn't gravitate to that brand. So yeah. I didn't really want to sell it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've definitely made some poor business decisions <laughs> over like personal or like integrity. Yeah. <laughs> right? I've, I've made, I don't know if, you know, to a business person, a businessman, they might be like, well, if it's selling, why are you getting rid of it? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I w exactly, yeah. In a way, that's kind of what the shop is all about, in my opinion. It's kind of like you said, what it started was is you putting out the shit you like yeah. because you want other people to see what you think is dope shit. Yeah. And if you don't have what you think is dope shit, it kind of strays away from that general identity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I'm. <laughs> my sister's always like, why, you know, why to half of the shit that we do? Because, like, I... Now I'm starting to listen to her a little bit more because she's got way more business sense than me. And I just I'm if I feel so passionate about an idea, I'll just like cannonball into the deep end of the pool, you know? Yeah. And my yeah. sister got, has to keep me sort of like leveled. Yeah. yeah. Um, now figure it out later. Hope it oh, my God. I'm so crazy at that. Yeah. I'm like, let's go. Just like Leroy Jenkins <laughs> into the <laughs> classic. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, but yeah, so we we. So like right around 2006, seven, we had those brands on the store and we were killing it. I mean, we, this store is 350 square feet and we were doing thousands of dollars a day. Wow. And 
had no idea that like that's not how <laughs> shit works, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, okay. That I see what we we're mean. like, oh man, they're killing it. This is gonna be like this forever, really. And yeah. you know, it wasn't until then we're like, well, this space isn't big enough. I think that before we moved to Seven Hundred One, we had damn near eighty brands in the store. Wow. But the problem that we've one of the problems that we had was that we didn't we thought we we thought we were trying to mimic what other businesses were doing I so see. if like like on like then there was a push for online and there were brands like digital gravel and karma loop that existed right mm-hmm. and yeah. you're looking Huge. at the amount of brands that karma loop has and you're like well we do, do, we need to do that yeah right I or see. you're looking at other stores yeah. that are um, on the same sort of competitive level as you, and they have 80 brands. We need 80 brands, and yeah. you're just like, it's just too much. Yeah. We like honestly, we should have stuck with the core dozen brands that sold really well for us, and like didn't do anything else. Yeah, um, it's but, hard you know, not you to live and learn. It's yeah. hard not to also do that, like not necessarily comparative, but you're kind of like trying to learn from other people who are doing it what you see is yeah, right. and you think they're doing it right exactly yeah. yeah and it's right for them but it wasn't necessarily right for your space i feel like yeah and also they're doing it for the first time too yeah, and where's karma point. loop where's digital gravel that. now yeah right so um so our model was to sort of like follow you know and yeah. and instead of trying to lead trends um, unfortunately, San Diego's not. Well, it's get it's way better now, but yeah, San Diego at the time it wasn't like we were like tastemakers, you know. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, like all my friends that like have any sort of like style or fashion sense and are ahead of the curve, like they're too ahead of the curve here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. So uh, it takes too long. You know, <laughs> it's like even with music, like as a DJ, it's like. Oh, cool! We have to play these fifteen club bangers. Yeah. That like I always thought anyone could do. Like, what makes this special and unique? We couldn't break. I I felt like we couldn't break new music in the club. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, DJ Khaled opens up for Beyonce playing the same like, like you said, same ten songs and just yelling in between. It's more of like just because he has this following and you know whatever Miami is seen as a tastemaker for DJs for whatever reason. Mm. Um, so it is totally interesting. I think like you said San Diego's way on the up and coming in terms of it's that. It's getting now. so much better. Yeah. It's way better now. But. Yeah. I think San Diego's kind of an interesting place too because what people are now seeing is that it's it has the resources of a big city, but also it has all these cool little pockets of neighborhoods that bring different vibes right. that make up the county in general. And also with the inter- the internet uh and technology you know it allows people to do what they love and stay in their city yeah before you know if you were a designer or fashion designer LA. or any kind of thing you got to go to la you got to yeah. go to LA, new york yeah, yeah the big yep. cities you're you're out of here yeah so anybody that anybody that to to be successful um any you know and now it's not so much the case i think that you can do a lot of freelance yeah. you know i have friends that work for brands in la and they just stay here yeah yeah and it's pretty just, cool or they go up to la once a week yeah. do a little thing come back you know yeah, yeah. but need to. work from home and yeah and the bar has definitely been lowered as far as technology to allow a lot of people i mean like doing this podcast this was only for radio Exactly. Precisely. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And now it's, I mean, yeah, with the freedom, especially like the second that it was allowed on iTunes and Spotify right. and, and that it became a thing on YouTube, it was kind of game over for like all the radio shows in yeah. a way, um, which it's, it's weird. Like you said, it makes it easier to get out there, but also it increases the competition. Competition's harder, but just because the thing is easier doesn't mean that everybody wants it. Oh, yeah. You know, they Good think point. they want it. Yeah. You know how many people that I've dealt with in my life where they come into the store and go, I want to intern for you. I, this is something I really want to do. And then they they spend a couple of weeks and go, yikes, this is way harder than I thought. You know what I mean? Or 
or I see a lot of people that go, I want to be a DJ now. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I I get that you can have MP3s on your laptop and you can connect it to a controller and you can just play. (laughs) But I've met a lot of these young kids that don't even know how to plug their shit in. They don't even know how to set it up to whatever sound, like if I booked them to play at a local event and they don't even know how to plug their shit up. Like that's like DJing 101. Yeah. But, like, I, I feel like that's kind of my responsibility to be like, yo, dude, you're, you're fucking up. Yeah. Let's fix that so you can be better at your profession if you're serious about it. Um, but kids see shit on the internet and they want to skip. They, they want to skip steps. They want to go from A to freaking, they don't real, you know, M. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've listened to... I like a I like a lot of stand up comedians. Yeah. And there's a lot of comedians that do the road. They hit the road and they have and there's kids that are on the internet now just doing comedy and they become famous from it and <laughs> I see these old older cats that are like, You're skipping steps, you know? Yeah. And I can understand their frustration. Yeah. But at the same time, we have if you're gonna be relevant, you need to understand that Things are different. Things you are changing. You have to adapt. You have to, you have to adapt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's probably been a learning process for you even too. I mean, in this day and age too. Yeah. Um, I've used this example before, but imagine owning a retail space in 1950, right? Yeah. Let's say five and a dime. Okay. Nickel and dime store, 1950. And you have that store for 10 years. What has changed as far as technology is concerned it's exponential in growth i mean the, right? there's what is, what hasn't changed would be the what, easiest what i'm saying from 1950 to 60 oh, 60, yeah. oh it's a 60 oh, oh yeah 1950 to 60 oh i thought you were saying now yeah. till no, now no 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 1950 to 60 t- a decade cuz we've had our store 13 years okay, okay. so yeah. you say you have to take a retail space in 1950 to 1960 what did, what 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 Te- have they done technology they have maybe tr- Cash registers got a little bit crazier. Maybe where are you? Where are you gonna? Where are you gonna advertise your business? Newspapers, yep. magazines. Yeah. Yep. Maybe like if you're lucky, you get to do a commercial on yeah, maybe t- a, local TV. Yeah, maybe a big yeah, billboard right? somewhere. That's about it. That's it. Do you know how many things that like when we first started, we spent five thousand dollars maybe on our POS system. Mm-hmm. That's if you were to put it to what is available now, that is, it's a fucking dinosaur. Really? It's archaic. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. everything's on cloud. Everything's cloud based, and yeah. you know, it's just totally different. I mean, we're on an iPad now. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's wild. Um, when we when we when we f- first launched our website, we had to hire our, our friend to build the back end of the website <laughs> from scratch because there was not any. There was no Squarespace. No Wix, no nothing. There was nothing. Now there's multiple, like I right. said, competitors in this. We spent like, over the course of however long we had the site, we probably spent 30 grand. Wow. To keep it updated and... That's insane. Right? Yeah. Wow. I and didn't, I we, didn't had, we had to make those changes and all of a sudden Instagram comes along and these, you know, and you're like, you're like, okay, like when Instagram first, we were early adopters to IG. When Instagram first came out, they actually deleted our account because we were a, st- a business. Oh, and it was supposed to be for personal. Yeah. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. So wow. we had a few thousand followers and they just like deleted the account because they're like, there's no businesses here because we were going on there and advertising. And now there's we were a making, We were putting feature. flyers on our, on our Instagram and we were doing scavenger hunts and we were like doing all these weird things using IG as a tool to like get people to like pay attention to us way ahead of the curve there. we were but now we're way behind yeah. because everyone's <laughs> doing so much crazy shit that like we yeah yeah the it, levels that it's it's wild now from that to like having instagram live now and like the giveaways they do now are insane and stuff it's nuts and yeah it's 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 a total it's a total uh game changer in terms of in terms of the business and like 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 we said it's easier to entry but also more competition right but i think in the end of the day you know like you said it's either the people who like talk about it and don't do it. That's you know they're either not going to do it, or the cream will still rise to the crop or to the top in terms of uh, in terms of 
like if you're dedicated, if you're genuine in your business, you know. And I think it's within the streetwear game, I'm not sure. Is was that correct? Maybe. I had a conversation yesterday with some guys that I've have been around for a really long time in our industry. And my question that I've yet to answer is how can you be cool and make money at the same time? You can't as a brand. Like like a streetwear brand take uh i mean i guess everything comes full circle right but take diamond supply okay right they were very very popular they released the diamond dunk yeah. that was huge. right and that sort of like took off for them and everything was like like right mm -hmm. um and then uh, and then they get put into big box stores they're in zoomies they're in tillies like everyone yeah. can have, next thing you know it's like there's bootlegs of it you know, coming out of China or like you can get out to swap me and stuff. And then yeah. at some point everybody has it and then nobody wants it. Yeah. Huh? You know what I mean? So it's, it is an ebb and flow. Yeah. You can't you have to figure out that perfect balance of like, how do you make money without like getting too big, blowing or, yourself out either that, or you just go, you know what I'm doing it with the intention of just like, I'm going to fucking do this to the wheels fall off. Yeah. Coca-Cola, this shit with Supreme with some of the stuff Supreme's doing. They sound like crowbars and well, the crazy thing about Supreme is that I think where, because people probably are, people probably may have the opinion of, oh, I'm not, I don't fuck with Supreme anymore, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But again, I think it's going to come back. Like, there's always going to be fans of it, and it may dip, but yep. it'll come back, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. But Supreme is Supreme, and Supreme was the first. Yeah, they are the grandfathers yeah. of the streetwear world, and they dictate a lot of what goes on. Yeah. And they don't give a fuck. When you say sorry, when you say dictate, what do you mean? Like, like they kind of like dictate like what, like how they how things are supposed to happen. In the so they industry. kind of set the trend, and then people kind of I, follow a little them bit, like, a little bit. Yeah. Somebody people to might people might disagree with me, but I mean. Yeah. Like, like the, the crowbar box. is almost like a joke, dude. Yeah, 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 exactly. You're getting kids to spend f however much on a Supreme <laughs> yeah. crowbar. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. there's somebody who's going to go on the internet and flip that for four times the amount. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So if the market yeah. exists, why not take it's advantage nuts. of it? It's nuts. Like, I, dude, <laughs> every day I think about it. You just look around this room. There's some expert that knows something about something, and there's a way that they're going to exploit it. Yeah. Wow. Right? You look like Supreme. Like... You have all these people going on creating eBay businesses for product that they own no rights to. They That's just crazy. are resellers. flippers, resellers, yeah. just middlemen. I mean, even the, different than middlemen. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the resale game personally yeah. because yeah, same, yeah. I think it tends to keep true fans out of. Yeah. things that they, you know. I think it is, but sometimes, you know, like you were saying, it it is one of those things that makes supreme supreme the fact that people it's do a run catch 22 right exactly yeah. it is like it i feel like there's a lot of within the industry within the streetwear industry and just the the cool industry that is a catch 22 like can't get too big you know you want to be resold but don't want to be ripped off i mean it's very interesting and to to always walk that middle line almost in regardless of any profession is always a tough thing always a tough yeah deal. i mean we've we've done we've executed some things in our business where like i'm like oh shit like i don't want to be known as <laughs> as the the store that because we there's certain products that we've released over the course of its existence that have done really well for us hmm. like really well um and then people start um recognizing you for that one thing and i don't want to be known for that one thing no it becomes pro i mean yeah because then you just have to either you know it's like an artist getting famous for one song in a sense yeah. you know so you then we kill it yeah <laughs> and then my parents are like well, why are we or whoever is involved they're like why have we stopped doing that it's like well because i'm concerned about the longevity of us, the our brand, brand as a yeah. whole yeah that uh, well that's smart i mean i think that's taking together the five and a dime as a whole rather than you know oh this logo did well for us maybe we should play off that 
I mean, like that, that allows you to adapt when you don't get too attached to one thing or one identity or one idea or one logo. I mean, it's, it's kind of, well, don't get me wrong. Like, like the five D faithful hat you're wearing, I'm wearing. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, that's our bread and butter for the store. Yeah, no doubt. Um, when we do the Padres colorways, like whatever colorway we hat that, like it always sells. It always yeah. sells. Um, I, we're gonna keep that around forever. But it's more. That's more iconic. Yeah, yeah that doesn't like, feel like than a, like a, a, a trend or um, a fad. I don't yeah. want to be like a fad. Yeah. 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 Where, like yeah, because the, like you said, I mean, I'm sure the other stuff still moves. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not like it's that's the only thing that moves. And that's no, the other you, stuff does good. Exactly. But we'll always have this logo in our store yeah. because awesome. it's the icon of the brand. And it's because we do support San Diego as much as yeah. we possibly can. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, yeah, I think there's a lot of fun stuff you do. I mean, I, I see on your IG a lot of the stuff you post is about kind of like events where you're either at a swap meet or, um, you know, at kind of a local market or, yeah. or doing collaborations with you know, other local businesses. I know Super 7 and you guys were gonna, were talk, in talks to do something pretty interesting. Um, I think that kind of lends itself to how San Diego is too. Very collaborative. Everyone's really down to support and work together. Uh, I think we have to. I don't, wow. I think that, I think that, I think that there's not enough for everyone to eat and the only way we're gonna make the city great is if we all sort of cooperate with each other. Huh. Um, I mean, I I don't. I'm sure there's there's people out there that don't like us. There's people out there that don't like me. But I try my hardest to like be cool with as everyone that I can. Yeah. You know, because I mean, might be a bit of jealousy there. Well, <laughs> maybe. I mean, we all talk shit. Yeah. I've run my mouth. I've said some stupid shit. Everyone uh, has. Like I said, I've had my. I had. We had a podcast for a long time, and I might have said some really dumb stuff <laughs> that might have like offended people. Yeah. Yeah. You know That's what I mean? Without yeah. thinking. Yeah, but it's not like an intentional like malice. That's like, a big problem with podcasts. You hear a lot of people upsetting people with things they say. So. I I hear that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, you know, I'm sure we've pissed some people off, but we really, really try to be supportive of the community, Mm -hmm. not just from the apparel side, just the arts, music, whatever, you know, like we want to support people. We can't work with every single person here. There's no way like there's no way we can do a collaboration with everyone. But um, a year ago, my buddy VJ brought the clean slate swap meet to my attention. Yeah, he had an idea. He said, I want. We all have brands or we have art or we have photography that we're just sitting on that we can't move. Why don't we have a swap meet for it? And can we use the back parking lot of the store? And we were, I was like, man, I'm in. Because it was the perfect way for us to support the community, mm-hmm. get like-minded individuals in the same space. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, hopefully they could move product right yeah stuff ultimately and get on. your stuff to the people yeah so we did the first one and we had 15 vendors in the back lot wow it was supposed to be so the idea was a, a, a spring cleaning right okay clean slate stuff spring cleaning on. yeah right so we did every other month for we did three starting in like january or february or something Sick. of last year we did we did three um every other month last sunday of the month oh, in the, yeah. the back lot and it was cool. It was really cool. Yeah. And I was like, all right, all right, Veej, like, we'll <laughs> see you again next year when we do it again, right? Yeah. And he's like, man, people are like hitting me up to do like we to keep go- it going. And I was like, Sh- uh, all right, should we keep it going? You know. <laughs> and um, and um, the people at Idea One over here on, I'm gonna mess this up. E and like Park. Yeah, it's an apartment complex, right? Okay. But um, they have Lola Fifty Five um, in the space. It's like a taco shop. Oh, nice! Like a taco okay. restaurant. It's like really, it's really, yeah. really, really good. Shout out to Lola Fifty Five. Um, yeah, and Young Hickory's in there. <laughs> okay, and so you got them to. They pull have up. some small businesses in there. Um, well, so so they so Idea One said use our quad for free. What? Just come do it. Um, Because we just want people to come. Yeah, it's bigger in the back. And we want people to come and see the space, right? So the first one we got to do for free, luckily. And um, we put 40 vendors or something like that 
in there and then wow. we did we, so we did one there and then we did a night market there and then in December of last year we did I, ta- I I'm good friends with um, this guy Dave Adams who works at Green Flash Brewery okay in Mira Mesa and he's like use our parking lot Wow. So we did a big holiday market. Yeah, that's um, giant, that parking yeah, lot. Yeah, we we bumped it up to like 65 or 70 vendors. Wow. Yeah, so like within that's one awesome. year, yeah, <laughs> with one year, what's... From 15 to 65. It's that's really incredible. nuts. But I love it. Yeah, that's and the kind of synergy stuff yeah. where it's proving its point in the numbers and yeah. with the, like the demand of people who like, I want to be a part of that. And the great thing about it is like VJ is like, he's... He's got like he's got a a good like thing put together on his end as far as like people that he's connected with the younger the younger guys and gals that are coming up Mm -hmm. he's 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 a designer himself so all of our stuff is designed awesome you know like it's just so great and um so he's helping us with that thing and and now we can do markets for good stuff and yeah. it's wow. just like, you know, it's, it's yeah, stories. it's like, and now, and, and, and the, <clears throat> the super, ra- so, you know, every time we sit down and talk about what's the next clean slate going to look like, um, you know, we, we now we're going to go after bigger brands. Sick. My goal is to try to reach out to Ben and Bobby from hundreds and yeah. say, Hey, come do this. Swap yeah. me with us. It was really fun. And, and if we can get a couple big brands to come, obviously more people are going to come to the event. Mm-hmm. The kids, the other, you, you know, the other vendors, the younger startup guys are going to be like, damn, like I, I want to be in that. Right. I yep. want to be like rubbing elbows and part of it. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, so that's kind of like our next goal is to try to go after some bigger brands. Um, but the, the, the cool and interesting thing is now I've got people that are actually making products specific to the event. Wow. So, so they'll do the clean slate, like, no, like they'll, like we did a, we did a hat with, um, we did a hat with, um, this company called the good stock and they, and we only sold the hat at the event. Sick. We made 36 of them. We sold them at full price and. Yeah. So now there's other people doing that. You yeah. know, you go to a clean slate event. Yeah. They'll make you know, specific uh, items for yeah, the event. Yeah. yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. so it's really neat. And so now we're like seeing like how it's sort of like adapting and developing and it, yeah. it's really it's really interesting. Well, and that's a, like such a natural way of getting cool brands like you said like minded people together and also, yeah. you know, a good place to get it to the people. I mean, and and also we're just putting vendors next to random people and there you never know that conversation uh, sparks a conversation. You know what I mean? Collab. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah. Like yeah. two people might go, well, I need a designer. I need a photographer. And like all of a sudden it's like, it's, so it's like a great networking platform. Yeah. It's instant, just synergy yeah. all around. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts. So we did a whole year of that, right? So wow. we did six events last year. Yeah. And then Veej came to me at the beginning of the year and was like, let's, we have a lot of vintage thrift guys that are trying to sell at the swap meet, which is okay, but oh, it's, yeah. they're trying to sell, um, you know, stuff at the, the, where the, where the markup is higher. Right. I see. And I, I was see. like, well, you know, this is supposed to be like swap meet style yeah. items, you know, affordable stuff. And some of the thrift guys are like sitting on mad product and like $10 shirts or $5 shirts or whatever. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's fine. But Veej was like, let's, let's create a market for the thrift guys. So huh. last yesterday we did our first event called the Come Up, and we did and we brought it back to Ideal One. So I think we're gonna do the way it's panning out for this year is we're gonna do all of our clean slate swap meets at Green Flash, and then we're gonna do all of our vintage thrift Come Up events at Idea One. Idea One. So we did our first one yesterday, and it was yeah. like it was really good. Yeah, we, I saw we, the tote bags on the yeah, line. Yeah, that's right. Sick. And so we had thirty some odd tote bags just laying in the back of the store um, that we had purchased for something we were going to do with Clean Slate and never did. Mm-hmm. And Vija's like, J- I'll just make a logo. My buddy Johnny will be there printing. He'll just run off thirty two. First thirty two people get a free tote bag. That's awesome. So now we're like, okay, that's what yeah. we're going to do that shit all the time. First <laughs> yeah. 75 people get this, you know, first 100 people get this. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to get yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's smart. And I you know, that's a cool way to cuz it's kind of like 
has a kind of cool vintage old school feel to it still where it's like it's not like the instagram giveaways which you know like tag 17 people it's just like yeah. show up and get it yeah. yeah you know i don't know how to hashtag shit anymore i don't do <laughs> it's it's you know it's it's yeah. it's annoying but it's also useful because it allows you to reach you know interesting markets yeah. but you know it, it's, it's it's i can i hire somebody to do that oh yeah <laughs> i don't want i don't want to do that anymore me personally you i know, know what, what you i mean, mean. I know. it's like when you own your business you have to wear so many hats like i i ha- had to shoot all my own product so i had yeah. to learn how to shoot f- fucking um product photography mm-hmm. and i had to get invest in good cameras and lighting and i had to like learn all that shit and then yeah. when I, we were doing instagram i was tan- i still handle all the instagram for five and a dime that's why it yeah. sucks yeah because uh, like I, I'm all over the place, yeah. you know, from yeah. good stuff to yeah. to clean slate to whatever, yeah. and hickeys and dry humps. Our '90s night that we do, it's like I'm all over the board, you know. So, yeah. um, I just wish that we were in a better place financially, where we could have a, like a legit team, you yeah. know, guy, somebody handling the marketing, somebody you know, helping me with distribution. It's yeah. like yeah. do everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. So, well, I mean, yeah, it's it's. In a certain sense, though, it is kind of cool to have the control, but I know what you mean. It'd be nicer to hand it off. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 unfortunately, like, I live my life having to multitask, and I suck at it. Yeah. And I'm trying to get better, but, like, I, I, I if I'm doing one or two things for the good stuff and five and a dime, the other three things are suffering. You know what I wow. mean? So it's like... Cause I don't know how to like spread my time out evenly. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, there's a problem over here. Let's fix that. I'm gonna ignore all this until this gets done. And put out and, that yeah, fire, yeah, and then yeah. on to the next fire. So, so for me right now, it's trying to figure out how to be a better, better multitasker. Yeah, time management yeah. and such. Yeah. Well, that's that's definitely something you know that you'll work on as you grow and you know keep keep pursuing you I'm, know i'm old though <laughs> <laughs> i'm old though so oh, i don't know man. if i'll ever learn you know yeah. like is it too late for me <laughs> it's never too late yeah, i don't know uh yeah i mean i guess the last thing i would want to just ask is you know the common theme of the of the show is always you know passion to paychecks uh right. you know passion to profession what would you recommend for anyone out there who you know is working it may be working in a job they're not satisfied with and to follow that kind of creative niche whether it be in streetwear or uh, cooking or anything um well what i'll say is this luckily the bar to entry is so much lower that it's safer to at least spread your wings a little bit and try Mm -hmm. right you could if you're a writer you could put your work up on you know your own site and try to get it out that way or if you're a designer you can you know to do some freelance for for companies or different businesses without quitting your day job right away yeah. you know what i mean um some people just don't have the balls to do it yeah i've yeah. just never i i mean i think about it i think about it pretty regularly it's like um i could have a day job and have security mm-hmm but I don't know. I don't know which one I would rather have. Like to to give up the four hundred one k and the dental, <laughs> like and the security and just like hate my life. Yeah. I like move however I want. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean I don't have a, a shit ton of money. Yeah, but like I, if I want something bad enough, I figure out how to get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So. Um, I just think sometimes people think in their head that they want it more than they actually want it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and but I think the biggest thing is don't be scared to ask for help. You know, a lot. Of, you know, or try to reach out to somebody in a specific profession. Because the biggest takeaway, like thing that I could suggest for others that are like following, kind of like in along the same path as us, mm-hmm. is. Like if I can give them any kind of advice, like I don't have all the answers, but if I can give them advice or at least like, go, you know, if I see somebody going down a path that's incorrect, if I can sort of steer them in the right way, right? Make a suggestion. Okay, I know you're talking to this guy and he's saying, 
the, you, you think in your head you're going to do 144 shirts, T-shirts, yeah. right? Well, let's like think about this. Like, okay, you might get a pre- really great price break at 144, but now you're going to have all these shirts sitting on your website at discount. Do 36. Sell them out. Yep. Move on to the next thing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just like one small little thing. Yeah. We had to learn that yeah. on our own. Yeah. Yeah, we had to learn that. It's like sitting on merchandise Mm -hmm. because that's just money on the shelves. Yeah, exactly. And whether it's like a size that people don't want or something like that. it's it's Dude, I've done designs for things. I'm like, oh, we're going to kill it with this. (laughs) And nobody gives a shit. Well, and then some, I bet you're like, dude, this won't sell a and fucking it single. And it destroys. Boom. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it's definitely, we found the same thing, you know, with the podcast. Like, we're like, yo, this guest is going to get us like a huge following or this. Yeah. Guest. And it's kind of been like the opposite in, in some senses. And it's been on point in some senses. Yeah. So it's like, you never know. And you might as well You're try definitely it. not going to get a lot of, <laughs> nobody's going to be like, oh, Jay, Jay from 500 times. Oh, you'd pod. be surprised. But I'll tell you this because. One of the things that we definitely want to try to improve on um, this year and just for the future of 5D is unfortunately it's like it's like we got we got to drink the Kool Aid, dude, and um, we got to get our followship up like on Instagram and stuff mm-hmm. like that because you know other people look at that and unfortunately that dictates dictates popularity. Yeah. It's wild, it's, yeah. It becomes it's the super fucked up. I would say that I, we're more impactful. Mm-hmm. As a brand, as a business, me as a human to other people, I'm more impactful. You know, people are always like, oh, he's the OG, whatever, whatever. Yeah. That's great and everything. I can't eat. <laughs> as, <laughs> sometimes as, yeah, so yeah. just saying, oh, that's the OG. Well, you come to the store and buy some shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it is, yeah, like, like everything, it's that dichotomy of, you know, being the OG, but also, you know, push some merchandise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a very fine balance yeah. of the two. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I just hopefully could save somebody. Yeah. Yeah. A, a little bit. Yeah. Any um, any like shout outs you want to give? Any like plugs you want to give on stuff coming up in the future? Um, like uh, events, lines, anything. I know. I never want to plug stuff for the future because Smart. then because then if it doesn't happen, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I look like an asshole, yeah. and I'm always the guy that gets like overly excited about like this and this and oh. this is going to happen and then it doesn't yeah. and then you just have to eat your words so it's like let's be a, let's be a under promise over deliver yeah. type thing yeah but um um i mean the big sh- the big shout out f- is for good stuff cookie co like that's my sister's like baby yeah and it's like the thing that like we're, we're really trying to push yeah i mean i feel like she has a great product yeah they're amazing yeah, yeah. yeah they're amazing they and I love the look, like the whole idea of like the cookies in the mason jar and kind of doing like a completely unique take on totally different style of cookies, but yeah. making them authentic and really tasty. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because uh, it's, if, uh, the ingredients are basic, but yeah. it, uh, it's it's the whole package, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, she, you know, she was trying to go for that like, you know, uh, nuclear family 1950s yeah. feel to yeah. your grandma's cookie, right? With yeah. a little twist. Yeah. And... Um, I think she killed it. We need we need to get this girl some confidence because she lacks confidence yeah. in herself. Yeah, but but you know, there's definitely some things that there's gonna be some like uphill battles for us. Like as far as it, the cookie is has to be refrigerated. There's cheesecake in it. Um, yeah. There's a shelf life because of it. Uh-huh. Um, uh, shipping is a pain in the ass. It's oh, in a mason jar wow. with dry ice packing. It's like crazy, okay. right? Wow, so okay. there's some. Yeah, there's some – well, we do special orders for people. We don't have it on oh, the website yet because we're trying to, like, get the pricing right. It's yeah, just yeah. $12 jar of cookies. You add 6 $7 shipping. You got a 20-something-odd dollar jar of six cookies. Yeah. It gets a little expensive. I mean, there's yeah. definitely other um, dessert companies out there. I won't name any names that are, like, ridiculous with the pricing and oh, yeah. shipping and stuff, mm-hmm. but – so, but I, that, that doesn't just justify us doing it. Yeah. Um, but we just need to get it right. But like, and we need to get eyeballs on it. Yeah. I need to get eyeballs. Five and a dime will be around forever. Five and a dime, hopefully it'll be around forever. Yeah. It's the anchor for our family. Yeah. Right. But the good stuff, that's 
we can we can go global with that shit. Oh yeah, like absolutely. We, if we get it right, right. So yeah. we just need to get eyeballs on it. So yeah. that's that's the that's that's what we're working on right now. Is yeah, getting, well, absolutely. Everyone who's tuning in, yeah, at Good Stuff yeah, Cookie on yeah, Instagram. At, yeah, at, yeah, Good Stuff Cookie Co. At Good Stuff Cookie Co. So yeah, yeah following. Yeah, yeah, that's, and, yeah. That's pretty much it. I mean, we have hickeys and dry humps. It's a it's like a throwback party we've been doing for a decade as well. That's awesome. I'm a lifer, dude. Yeah. Like anytime I do, I stick it out. Yeah. But yeah, um, we've been doing that at El Camino of every first and third Friday. Um, we have one coming up this this week, March first. I want to say. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Friday, yeah, March that's, 1st that's at Friday. El yeah. And that, and then we have the clean slate. So just basically go to clean slate. Um, I, 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 I yeah. yeah. Um, go to Clean Slate. Uh, look us up on, uh, online. And you can um, – I think I think we're going to have one event every last Sunday of the month for this year, I think. That's okay. the plan. So, so one go, event on yeah, yeah, yeah. every last Some Sunday of the Some sort of swap meet or vintage thing. Yeah. We're hoping that we can get do a food market at some point maybe. Wow. I might – be saying too much again i don't know uh, it's, we'll see it's it, it we want to like we want to expand it yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah totally yeah. totally well yeah i yeah. mean i for expansion yeah a lot to do with that i mean even yeah I, just getting more brands in and yeah and expanding it to other things like food that's, that's yeah we'll see yeah we'll see yeah absolutely well exciting I, to watch yeah, I totally uh, I appreciate your time and I yeah, appreciate man. you having us in Did the I, shop. Why was I talking too much? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Dude, this is this is like I, I love I love the I love I love the flow of it. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Oddcast. Awesome. Thank uh, you guys. Yeah, and yo, it. five and a dime. Uh good stuff, Cookie Co. Yep. Clean slate. Check them all out. We'll put them in the link of the video so you'll know where to find them. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for tuning into the Oddcast where we talk about ter- people turning their passion into profession and subsequently passion into paychecks. Have a great I'm waiting day. for the paycheck though. <laughs> Still waiting for the paycheck. Hey, us too. Us too. Us too. Thanks so much, Jason. Yeah, no problem. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Big shout out to Sweet Bricks too. Custom orders. Sweetbricks.com at Sweetbricks. Get that toffee. Get that toffee. Let's get a little weird. Let's get a little odd. Those sounds you like to hear, we got it going on. It's the Oddcast. It's the Oddcast. It's the Oddcast. It's the Oddcast.